I'm Professor Know It All and welcome to day five of Wonderzone, your online at home holiday club. We've had quite a busy week this week. We've done chemistry, we've done physics, we've put mints into coke and we've looked for bugs, we've made whirlpools and we've looked at light. But today we are looking at well, I wonder what we are looking at today. Perhaps the experiment will make a little bit more sense. Hello. So here I am, Professor Notal, with the very last experiment of WonderZone. And again, it's physics. So if we think back, Monday's experiment, the day one, that was a chemistry experiment and that was the Mentos going into the Coke bottle where it, the little bits and the little dips and, that were in the mint, the gas, the carbon dioxide that was in the Coke liquid was went to the little holes, turned into bubbles and shot up into the air. Yeah, that was chemistry. Tuesday, day two, that was physics. And that was when we looked at how the solar system was put together and we did the whirlpool and it wasn't whistles and bells, but it did what we needed it to do. It was a model of how physics works up there in space. On day three, physics again, wasn't it? Because that was about light and we did the bubbles and we talked about how light comes through the liquid of a bubble and the, the liquid fractures it, splits it into seven different colours and that's why we get rainbows because that's what the sun does when it goes through rain. Now yesterday, yesterday was biology because we were looking at creepy crawlies and things that lived in the area around us. And I wonder how you got on with your own bug hunt. Did you find any more things than I did? Well, today we're back again with physics. And that's pretty much because physics controls how things work. That's just how it is. OK, so today we're looking at how if you make something that with like an electrical circuit, it doesn't change. As long as you put the things in the same place, it will always be the same. And that that's different to people. Because I'm always me, but I don't always make the same choices. So I'll show you. We're going to make a very simple circuit that some of you may have done before in school, or you might have a kit like this yourself at home. But this is a special kit and I'm going to move my camera down so you don't have to look at my face anymore and you can actually see the experiment. So I move my camera. Out. This is a special kit where all of the bits clip onto this board here. And when I was at school, we had to use things like crocodile clips and wires that clipped on. And when you go to secondary school, maybe that's the same for you too. But this is a kit I've got to make it a bit simpler. And over here, I've got a pack that's got the batteries in it. So that's the power. And what I want to do is turn this light on over here. So I need two more things. I need a resistor, which is this bit here, which transfers the power from here to this light. And it travels along this little coil here and it makes sure that it's the right level of power. And then I need this here which is a switch. So if I press the switch now, nothing happens because it's not joined up. So what I'm going to do now is join it up. And because it's a really good kit to have, all you do is clip them on like this. Now, this is now a circuit, which means there's no break all the way round. Now, when I press this switch here, what should happen is this should turn on this light. So let's see. Can you see it coming on? Okay, now, as long as it's set up like that, that will always come on there. It doesn't matter if it's today, it doesn't matter if I do this on next week, it doesn't matter if I do it in a year's time. If this is set up like this, it will always turn that light on. If it doesn't feel like doing it, it will still do it. 
because it doesn't think for itself. And that's a bit like robots. We have to tell them what to do. But because we are humans, we're able to make a choice. So if I want to turn the light on, I go and choose to turn the light on on the switch. Or I can choose not to put the light on. If someone asked me if I wanted a cup of tea and I'm sitting in a specific chair, I might say, yes, please. But they might ask me the same question when I'm wearing the same clothes, sitting in the same chair, and say, no, I'd actually like a coffee, because we can make a free choice and we don't have to do the same things every time. And that means if we make a poor choice, or a choice other people don't like, or it goes wrong, we can always choose something else. So unlike our circuit, which will always put that light on if it's like that, we can choose to make the right choice. Ah, so today's experiment is all kind of around when you use building something or you're making something electronic, the same thing always happens all the time and they don't get to make a choice. As long as the bits are in the right place, the same thing will always happen. It will never change. Hmm. I wonder if that what's the, what's today's really about. Well, we've got a story now, which is a very famous story that you might actually already know. And in it, it's around choices and things maybe being able to be different. Let's see if that makes sense too. <laughs> Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32 The parable of the lost son Jesus told a story There was a man who had two sons The younger one said to his father Father, give me my share of the estate So he divided his property between them Not long after that, the younger son set off for a distant country And there he squandered his wealth in wild living after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a farmer of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. The son longed to fill his stomach with the food that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come back, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with wild living, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. 
He was lost and is found. So, in the story, the prodigal son, the lost son, went away, didn't he? Took all the money that he wanted from his dad, went away, spent it all, and then he realised he'd made a terrible mistake and he went home. And his dad forgave him, didn't he? The other brother found it a little bit difficult to accept that, and I think we might do too. But that story really, I think, is around the, for the fact that you can change your mind. God allows us to do that. He allows us to make mistakes and change our mind. And that just because something was the way it was, doesn't mean it has to stay like that all the time. Unlike the circuit we made at the beginning, that was always going to give the same result. People don't always have to give the same result. Anyway, now it's time for our last visit of this holiday club to Dr Abstract's lab. Hi. Hi again. Well, it's day five, our last day together. Anyway, I'm Dr. Abstract and welcome to my studio. Or as Dr. Know It All, no, I do that every day. Professor Know It All says my lab anyway we're going to make some art our last piece of art today for our crafty experiment so let's make the most of our time together so you can see i've put up my flyer from yesterday for the insects we've still got my explosion picture we've still got my planets and we've still got my rainbow up there too but today was all about people like us. So, there was that story, wasn't there, about that very naughty boy who ran away, took his dad's money with him, spent it all, ended up living with the pigs. And then he realised he'd made a wrong decision, didn't he? Made the wrong choice. And that's something that people can do. They can make the wrong choice and then they can make the right choice. So we can choose to do different things. And in the experiment that you did with Professor Know-It-All, he tells me that he made something called a circuit, where if the bits were always in the same place, the same thing would always happen. And that doesn't happen with people, does it? We get to change our minds and do whatever we like. We can make a choice. We're not always the same like this week my hair has been blue but next week it might be pink i can choose it doesn't have to be the same so i thought we'd make some people today i've got two different types of people to make i've got these people these are very fun anybody can make these look and i'll show you what you do is you get a piece of paper and you do an old fashioned word called constatina, or you make it like a fan. So you fold it over and fold it over and fold it over like that. And then what you do is you draw on it the person that you're going to cut out. So I'm going to do that now with my felt tip. I'm going to do a girl one, but only because it's easier to do the dress bit, that's all. And if I show you, or it could be a boy in a dress, couldn't it? Like David Williams' book. That's such a funny book. Such a funny book. Anyway, so can you see? I've only drawn it on one side. Now I'm going to cut all the bits that aren't the drawing. I'll do this super quick. And you can see what happens. And then we're going to make the other one. Now, I've got green paper, but you could use any paper you liked. You could even use wrapping paper if you wanted to make really fancy people. So I've done this very quickly because I'm super fast. Because art can be fast, a bit like fast fashion. 
but it doesn't cost lives. So, can you see? When I fold them out, there are all my little people. But I've got another person to make as well. And this person can move. Now, some of you might have had a piece of paper or have something like this. Or if you haven't, you might be able to find one if a grown up can go on the internet and have a look and they can find this. It's called a moving figure or a jointed person. And we're going to make one. OK, so what I've done is I've cut all of those pieces out and then I've put a little hole in all of the bits that are the circles. And I did that using some of my plasticine from earlier on by poking it through with a pencil. And now I'm going to build my person. I'm going to start with the head. And I've got some split pins. And hopefully, if you've got one of these cards, you will have split pins too. And all you do is put them through and it fastens and then he will move about. Can you see? So I'm going to put my legs and arms on. And then I will have my moving person. Well, I don't know, my darlings, how you feel. But I've had an absolutely super week with you this week doing our experiments, our art. We made the most beautiful things. And it's so lovely to have you with me because, strangely enough, not even to go to very many visitors, even with social distancing, people don't come. I don't quite know why. Perhaps it's because I'm so talented. <laughs> what do you think? I think it might be. Perhaps it's because I'm so glamorous. Maybe it's my hair or maybe my art frightens them. I don't know. But it's so lovely that I've had you. Look, can you see my little person and his arms and his legs move? Now, you can decorate your person. How Ever you like. I think I might make mine up later to look a little bit like Professor Know It All or maybe even that lovely Professor Michael. Well, I'm just going to pin these up now and put them on my display to show the end of the week. So here I'm going to put my jointed person that we've just made. Oh, his legs fallen off. <laughs> It's not very good, is it? Crikey. Anyway, I'll stick his leg on later. There's my person. Look, with only one leg. But we'll do that later. And I think I might put my little paper people up too. Just because I like them. Whoop. Maybe you'll make a display of your art things too. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will hopefully... See you again one day. Thank you for joining me in my arty wonder zone. Bye. Well, thank you, Dr. Abstract. The last one, she didn't disappoint, did she? Well, perhaps she'll go and learn a little bit more about art before she gets involved in anything else. She calls herself Dr. Abstract, but I'm not sure what she is doctor of. Anyway. I've had a really lovely week and a wonderful time spending it with you, watching me and doing things and discovering things together about God and science and the world around us. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves and if we ever did anything like this again, I hope you would want to join us. Thank you very much. I've been Professor Know-It-All. Have a lovely summer holiday. Bye.